Hello Paul Pounds. So today I want to look at some uh, slightly newer books, which is odd for me, isn't it? And I think these books get largely overlooked, uh, mainly because of the publisher, Chaosium, um, who are probably most famous for publishing role-playing games. Um, the one that I play most is the Call of Cthulhu one. And I've only really found these books in role-playing game and board game shops um, on the shelf next to the rule books and expansions for Call of Cthulhu. And I want that's why I wanted to have a look at them because I, I, I can't help thinking that they're largely overlooked. So aside from role-playing games, Chaosium started uh, in the 90s publishing a really top-notch range of Call of Cthulhu inspired fiction. Now I'm well aware that old Lovecraft is a bit of a controversial figure nowadays and I don't really want to get into that. My channel is about chatting about books and having a cup of tea and listening to a story. There are other channels that are eager to discuss the ins and outs of his uh, the associated controversy around H.P. Lovecraft. I just wanted to put that out there. I don't want to be arguing with people. It's not my style. So the books themselves are a really nice quality uh, format C type paperback. So bigger than the mass market ones. Um, and they all have a matching typeface on the spine. So they do look quite nice on your shelf. Which... Is important, I think, sometimes to have a nice looking bookcase. So there's certain different styles of anthologies that they that they published. First and probably the most basic is their general uh, Cthulhu anthologies, such as Disciples of Cthulhu, Cthulhu's Heirs, um, and then branching out a little bit into other aspects of that whole mythos with books like Arkham Tales um, and Frontier Cthulhu. Just just telling more stories and not just reprinting the same Call of Cthulhu stories that you do see a lot of the time. And then they did anthologies of key uh, mythos authors a lot of the guys that were writing uh, with Lovecraft at the time in that Cthulhu little light mythos group that they had. So there's uh, collected mythos stories of Robert Block, Henry Kuttner, um Clark Ashton Smith, Robert E. Howard, and they've all got their own individual book that collects a lot of their their key mythos stories um, and about the deities and occult volumes that they introduced into the whole thing. Slightly later ones, like there's a, there's a Brian Lumley one, they do have a lot of, like, that has a lot of Brian Lumley stories in, but the later ones also seem to have um, affectionate tributes and stories by other authors inspired by Brian Lumley's work when he wrote about the Cthulhu mythos. There's also kind of faux reference books, which I love that. Um, the Necronomicon, which is a collection of fictional stories about the Necronomicon and also fictional articles about the Necronomicon. I mean, Lovecraft wrote a, a short article, The History of the Necronomicon, and it's just people expanding on that. Um, there's also ones like the Encyclopedia Cthuliana, which, uh, oddly enough, I went mad to get <laughs> and ordered from America in the 90s and paid the import duties, and I've hardly ever read it. Apologies to Daniel Harms that wrote it. It's an amazing book. But it's one of those that just sits on your shelf a little bit because it's not something you sit and read. It's something that you refer to. But I think some of the best uh, anthologies that they did were the 
cycle anthologies. So like the Innsmouth cycle, the Dunwich cycle, the Cthulhu cycle. And what these anthologies are, they're so cleverly edited. So for example, the Innsmouth cycle, which uh, is one of my favourites. I love the whole Innsmouth thing. So it starts off, I mean, they're, they're, they're gorgeous, gorgeous books. Really, really well produced, neat, tidy, uh, clean, plain looking books. Quite stylish. So with the Innsmouth cycle, there is a, there's always a little introduction by someone. Um, but it kicks off with uh, Lord Dunsany stories and Robert Chambers and even Fishhead by Erwin S. Cobb that Lovecraft refers to in uh, Supernatural Horror in Literature, which is also a brilliant book. That's one I could never be without because you look through that and you find all these turn-of-the-century 10s, 20s, 1930s gems that maybe don't get reprinted that much. If you're interested in weird fiction from that period... It's a bit dry and it's a bit of a plod, but you will get loads of new stuff that you just want to find and read. Um, obviously, it's got The Shadow Over Innsmouth in by H.P. Lovecraft. And then it goes into newer pieces, uh, stories, from the from really interesting sources. So, like from fanzines from the 70s and 80s and then new stories from authors in the 90s. A lot of these were published in the 90s and they are still in print um, and they are still available as paperbacks and uh, e-books if you fancy getting them as e-books. And it, it, the, the cycle ones just make a really... A really compact and incisive overview of one particular aspect of the Cthulhu mythos. Um, we're locked down again in the UK. We've been locked down for nearly a year, pretty much. So I've been plodding my way through reading these, and I'd forgotten how wonderful they are. And one thing I think that makes them wonderful is that they're not necessarily coming from a book anthologist's point of view. Now, there's some really good Cthulhu Mythos anthologies, such as Tales of the Cthulhu Mythos. Um, that's, uh, there was, I think there was an Arkham House book that's been reprinted so many times. And then Ramsey Campbell, the British author, edited New Tales of the Cthulhu Mythos, um, which is also another brilliant book. There's ones like Children of Cthulhu and the series Black Wings of Cthulhu. They're absolutely great. But I just love getting this little overview that's edited and compiled from a role player's perspective rather than someone editing an anthology who maybe is a writer um, I think it gives a slightly different take on the purpose of an anthology. And because they were sold next to the role-playing game books and the supplements that came out in game shops, I think it's largely role-players that, that pick these up and utilised the ideas within them and incorporated those into their own games and adventures. They also, incidentally, I've got, to, I've always got to get Arthur Macken in there because I bloody love him. They did a really brilliant three-volume set of uh, Arthur Macken titles, which collect stories uh, that obviously Macken's stuff. It is just pure Macken, um, but there's there's like selections from. Stuff that you don't always see, such as ornament stuff from Ornaments in Jade, which is a book I haven't been able to get a nice edition of, things like that. So, they're worth, if you're interested 
in the mythos. They don't focus on Lovecraft. They focus on the mythos as a whole and every author that's contributed to that seems to be trekked with equal importance um, in the eyes of the people that edited these anthologies. So sometimes if you find Lovecraft a little bit, the controversy I spoke of before, if that's something that puts you off, these books are a really good route, either a route into uh, good Cthulhu mythos stories, or if you're already a fan but you haven't read these, there's a lot of interesting stories and ideas contained within them. Like I said, they are still available. They're not super expensive. Um, they keep getting reprinted, thankfully. And they're also available as, as e-books. Uh, if you go on the Chaosium website, it's Chaos, I-U-M, Chaosium. If you go on the Chaosium website, you'll be able to, uh, to get ones from there. Although, that's American. So, for British buyers... Pretty, they are on Amazon. You can have a you can have a good hunt round on Amazon and find some. Some go a bit more expensive for some reason. The Encyclopedia Cthuliana by Dan, Dan, Daniel Harms one, that does get a bit pricey. And there's a brilliant one um, of Ramsey Campbell's mythos stories uh, called Made in Goatswood, which is oh, British mythos. I love it. Haunted woods, but they're haunted with mythos monsters. That's that's what you need. So, thank you for watching, guys, and I will see you good folks in the next video.